and welcome to today's interview with Calculus. Today, our guest of honor is famous Greek mathematician Archimedes. Archimedes, you've made many generous contributions to the field of mathematics and science, but particularly calculus over the years. One question I have in particular, uh, on the sphere and cylinder section of your palimpsest, can you give us a little more insight on the Riemann sum? Of course. Well, uh, I give the upper and lower bounds of the surface area of the sphere by cutting the sphere into um, equal sections width. You can see here. Ah. I then bound the area of each section by the area of an inscribed and circumscribed cone, which I prove has a larger and smaller area correspondingly. I then add the areas of the cones, which is a type of Riemann sum for the area of a sphere considered as the surface revolution. Interesting. And can you elaborate on some of the problems that you faced when writing this section of, course. of your work? Yeah. Of course, yes. Um, well, first of all, I didn't know about uh, differentiation, as they do in modern times, um, so I couldn't calculate any integrals other than those that came from center of mass considerations by symmetry. While I had a notion of linearity, to find the volume of the sphere, I had to balance the two figures at the same time, and I never figured out how to change variables or integrate by parts. But for ancient Greece, I think I did pretty well for myself. Sure. And uh, so how do you feel, uh, this is tangential, but so how do you feel about how in uh, 1229 your original codex was unbound, uh, scraped, and uh, washed, and the parchment leaves were folded uh, in half and reused for uh, Christian text? Ah, oh, yes. Uh, that, that does, that brings me back to a, to a very bad time in my life. Um, I have to say I was not too pleased that the only copy of my uh, painstaking life work uh, was erased uh, for a Christian text of all things. Um, kind of puts holes in the whole science and religion, you know, mixing kind of idea. I mean, uh, let's say uh, they, uh, the Bible um, erased, uh, erased one of my manuscripts to write, uh, to write something on. You know, they wrote a Bible on it. I would probably get harassed by the church, but uh, when they do it to one of my papers, uh, they only get sore wrists, so, uh, so it's not fair in the least. Truly awful. Thank you so much for your time today, Archimedes. Yes, thank you very much. Hello, and welcome back to Interviews with Calculus. This week we have... Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz here to tell us about his discoveries on calculus. Welcome to the show, sir. Pleasure to be here. We're very glad to have you here today. So, can you, uh, can you tell us what you believe was your most important contribution to calculus? Well, I would have to say the invention of infinitesimal calculus, which comprises differential and integral calculus. My critical breakthrough occurred on November 11th, 1675, uh, when I employed integral calculus for the first time to find the area under the graph of uh, the function y equals f of x. Oh, very interesting. Um, but is it not true that you shared this, uh, this discovery with uh, Sir Isaac Newton? I don't really like to talk about that time in my life. If only the idea of intellectual property existed in the 1600s. <laughs> in my life. Indeed, Dad. It does carry, seem that you do carry some uh, bitter resentment around with that. So uh, we'll switch gears for that sake. You've been credited with the introduction of uh, many different forms of notation for calculus that are still used today. Uh, would you care to explain some of them? It seems uh, you put some up uh, on the board for our viewers today. Of course. The, well, the integral sign uh, representing an elongated S uh, from, the, from the Latin root word uh, summa, mm. and a D used for differentials, used from the uh, Latin word uh, differentiate, which you can see here with uh, dy over dx. Ah, ah very, uh, very interesting. So, um, would you also maybe care to elaborate on uh, some of your published works uh, with regards to Sir Isaac Newton? I did not publish anything about his calculus until 1684. The product rule of differential calculus is still called Leibniz's Law. Uh, in addition, a theorem that tells how and when to use different, uh, to when to differentiate uh, under the integral sign is called the Leibniz Integral Rule. I exploited infinitesimals in developing the calculus and manipulated them in many ways, suggesting that they had paradoxical algebraic properties, but I never plagiarized a Newton. I see. Um, did these uh, particular insights receive any criticism from the mathematics community? <laughs> Although I do not acknowledge uh, their works as valid, George Berkeley, uh, in a tract called The Analyst, and also in uh, De Motu, criti uh, criticized my works. A recent study argues that my calculus was free of contradictions, though, and was better grounded than Berkeley's uh, empiricist criticism. <laughs> Would you say that, um, that these criticisms settled down thereafter? Did things you know, quiet down? Did people just agree with your work after that? Fortunately, I cannot say so. Uh, mm -hmm. From 1711 until my hiatus from mathematics, I was engaged in a dispute with John Keel, Newton, and many others over whether I had invented the calculus independently of Newton. Well, it seems you were fighting to the bitter end, sir, indeed. Um, 
Well, thank you very much for having me on the show this weekend, and uh, thank you very much for your contributions to Calculus. Thank you for having me. Yes, that's all this week from uh, Interviews with Calculus. Hello, and welcome to Interviews with Calculus. This week on the show, we are proud to present Sir Isaac Newton as our guest for today. Welcome to the show, Mr. Newton. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, so we'll get started right away here with our first question. Uh, Mr. Newton, is it true that you are credited with the generalized binomial theorem? Indeed. Plus the valid for any exponent, I also discovered Newton's identities, Newton's method, method classified cubic plane curves, uh, I made substantial contributions to the theory of finite differences, and was the first to use fractional indices and to employ coordinate geometry to derive solutions to Diophantine equations. That, that's extremely interesting, sir. That's, that's very interesting. I also approximated uh, partial sums of the harmonic series by logarithms, uh, which was a precursor to Euler's uh, summations formula, and was the first to use a uh, power series with confidence. Very, uh, very, very interesting. And in my work oh. on uh, infinite series was inspired by uh, Simon Stevens' decimals and was also found to be published in junction with uh, Leibniz. <clears throat> little follow-up question off that, sir. Um, is it true that there's still some bad blood uh, between you and Mr. Leibniz? Absolutely. That guy is terrible. Ah. Would you care to maybe uh, elaborate on that, sir? Well, starting in 1699, other members of the Royal Society, of which I was a member, accused Leibniz of plagiarism. And the dispute broke out in full force in 1711. The Royal Society proclaimed in a study that it was I who was the true discoverer of certain uh, indices of calculus, and well, they labeled Leibniz a fraud. <laughs> well, uh, well, very interesting, sir. Um, I think that'll be all for our show today. Uh, we're here to stick with Mr. Newton. So uh, thank you very much uh, for being on the show today, Mr. Newton, and uh, looking forward to having you back another time. Thank you for having me. That's, uh, that's all for this week on uh, Interviews with Calculus.